Welcome back. Now it's time to take a look through the business pages of the Sunday papers. I'm joined by the chairman of Brandcap, Rita Clifton, and by the editor of City AM, Alistair Heath. Very good morning to you both. Thank you for joining me. Uh, Alistair, let's, uh, let's start uh, business sections. You're going for personal finance. Uh, this in the money section of the Sunday Telegraph. Yes, it's a very interesting story saying that Treasury officials have been in private talks with uh, leading lights in the financial services industry uh, with a view of possibly tearing up the entire ISA savings structure and actually capping... These are, these are tax-free schemes. Exactly. That, that's a tax-free scheme. You can put about £11,000 a year into these pots. They're either bank accounts, effectively, so you don't pay an interest, any tax on your interest, or you can invest, invest them in the stock market and don't pay tax again. And they're very, very successful. Millions and millions of people have you know, signed up to these accounts, and it's the main way that people in this country save. And at, at the moment, you can save an unlimited amount of money uh, in these ISAs as long as, you know, you don't go over the annual cap, the annual amount of money you put into the account. And of course, thanks to interest payments or if the stock market does well, the total pot can grow and grow and grow over your lifetime. And so that's been a very successful plan. But the problem now is it seems that people at the Treasury are, are talking to the industry with a view to capping the total amount you can put in this. It'd be a revolutionary change in uh, the saving structure in this country. Well, because people be worried about that. Do they say how advanced the plans are, or are they, just they saying seem we to be very about a lot yeah. of things? Well, it seems to be preliminary. That's what the Sunday Telegraph story says. But nonetheless, I think a lot of savers are going to be very, very worried indeed. And, um, you know, already the pension system keeps changing all the time. You know, virtually every year the government changes the goalposts. You've got the opposition calling for more changes. They're reducing the total cap, the total amount you can put in your pension. They're reducing the amount you can put in every year. There's now more talk that the Labour Party is going to change the rules yet again quite dramatically. And now suddenly the one area which was unchanging, the one area which seemed completely pro-saver, is actually possibly now yeah. under threat I mean, do you have also. a view on that, Rita, this idea if you're taking the pensions, the ISAs, you know, these are long-term things. These are f for a lifetime, as exactly, Alistair yeah. says. If you, if you change the rules, even, you know, every few years, well, then people just don't have any certainty and can't plan accordingly. And that's the issue, the one of certainty and confidence, I think. I mean, you do, you want to say, is nothing sacred, is nothing safe? Because the goalposts are being moved, and that's not good for consumer mood, that's not good for confidence, not good for investment. So all around, it just doesn't seem like a very sensible thing, but, you know, uh, every little pot is being raided, yeah, and that's, uh, it in these difficult that's the way times. it is. Talk to me about consumers, so well. Uh, top-end mm. consumers and uh, their effect on Burberry, uh, adventures in fashion there. Indeed. Well, this is a cheery business story for a rainy day, I think, today. A really <laughs> great story of a, a you know, world-class British brand and business. Um, it is going to be um, reporting on its lating, uh, latest trading statement uh, this week. It's just a great example of a British-based business that's combined creativity and imagination with real business discipline. I mean, it's combined business strategy and brand strategy, saying good business management is good brand, brand management and so on. The only slight irony here is it took an American American CEO to recognise the potential here. So that may be just a bit of a story for you know other business leaders, again, being ambitious on a world stage. Maybe take a mm. few leads from this book. I know it's it's top end, but the lessons are applicable. But a good throughout. old British brand, which got stuffy at one point uh, yeah. in its evolution and is now revolutionised itself. Absolutely. It has reinvented and refreshed itself. And what's more, I mean, if you just look at some of the markets that Burberry has succeeded in, I mean, obviously, China is slowing down, and that's going to be the nature of the press statement this week, but it's also planted flags in India, Latin, Latin America, and in Indonesia. This is exactly the kind of ambition that we need, because if we're not building these kinds of very successful, long-term, long-term valuable businesses, we're not going to have the money to pay for all the things that we need. Okay, well, that's well. one side of the economic future, uh, making things and uh, selling them abroad but uh, another dimension I'll see you're going to touch on now which has often driven our economy in the past is it going to drive it again the housing market uh, are we seeing a a bubble building here? Yes, I mean, uh, the Item Club, which is a, a very important economic forecaster, which uses the same model of, as the Treasury, has just increased its growth forecasts. I mean, its new report says that growth this is going to be 1.4%, next is going to be 2.4%, and that's quite good numbers. But I think the key point is that this is being driven, at least in part, by the housing market. They think house prices are going to, to go up 3 4% this year, but then 6 or 7% a year for the next two years. And to me, that's quite worrying, and there's a problem here, right? You can grow either by creating companies like Burberry or by mm. exporting, by you know, investing, by creating jobs, or you can grow by borrowing and, and then spending the money on imported consumer goods or on just consumer goods in general, rather. And I think the big worry is if the government is artificially inflating the housing market with help to buy and other schemes to sort of try and help people get 
onto the ladder. The problem is house prices are going to go up artificially. You're going to get more and more overvalued house prices again. It's going to be harder and harder for people actually to buy a house. And you're going to fuel this debt binge yet again the kind of problem we saw uh, in the noughties. And the whole point of this government's economic strategy was you know, to reduce leverage and to make the system more balanced. Well, I mean, we keep repeating it. I mean, we saw it. You, you well, we saw it in the noughties. We saw it in the 80s. We saw it in the 90s. Yes. Do, 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 yes. Every reason do we do it every decade? Well, it's, it seems to be the one answer that everyone has. You know, how do you, how do you boost growth? Well, let's get people borrowing a bit more money and spending a bit more money. And the best way to borrow money is to have a mortgage, of course, and so on. So I'm, I'm quite worried about it. I mean, the good news, nonetheless, because there is a good news story, which yes. is that the economy is accelerating, more jobs will be created, people's incomes will start mm. going up. But the bad news is this could be the wrong kind of growth. It could be the wrong kind of growth. And also, of course, companies are sitting on a lot of cash at the moment. Then you just think about how they're best going to use that cash in order to generate, again, these more sustainable returns. But talking about another You've very cash. successful We're company. We're going to talk about chips now. I was all excited when I'm that. I'm going to talk not, about chips. Yeah. Hot chips, actually, Not my kind actually, of chips, that. though. Hot chips, but... What's really interesting, this is the other end of the spectrum in terms of business from Burberry. But again, this is a great example of a British-based business. Where actually, even though it's British-based, then the new CEO, who, by the way, was promoted from internal sources rather than external sources. And I think that's an interesting uh, thing in its own right. But actually, he lives in California. Because obviously, this business has got a lot of very important clients in California. It's a world-based business. But what's interesting here is people say, you know, is it ARM or is it ARM, ARM yes. Holdings. What is it? I mean, that's, all, that's a signal in its own right about people haven't heard of it. This is one mm. of the most successful companies we've got in this country that most people haven't even heard well, of. which is it? <laughs> well, I say ARM, as yeah, in I'd ARM, say, say um, ARM also, even but, though but, actually it's an abbreviation of, of different companies we couldn't that actually have come together. Before no. in our conversation. Well, we couldn't. But what's interesting here is it doesn't necessarily matter because this is a business-to-business -business brand. And mm. what's more, they are building this company in a way that is truly sustainable. They're getting their employees engaged. Engaged. They're all you know, very collegiate, the way that they work together. Uh, and also, of course, their customers are some of the world's most successful companies. Now, the only question is, you know, uh, Intel are now going to compete against this. And it talks about this quite a lot in, in this article. And Intel, of course, has got a world-famous brand as well as a really great business. Now, whether or not ARM are going to have to think about themselves more as a consumer base yeah. as well as a B2B based brand, I think is very interesting. But it's a great story, very heartening. And looking at looking at themselves, building themselves from the inside out, not just actually thinking about what's the short term. It's a fascinating review uh, of some of the stories in the business pages. Mm. Thank you both very much indeed. Alistair Heath and Peter Clifton. Very good to see you. Thank you very much.